That's what we're missing here. A lot of people are missing out on their birthing. Birthing of their blessing, birthing of their, 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 their purpose of life. They've had a seed in them for so long, but they don't know what to do with it. The seed of the word, the seed of the kingdom. But now is the season. So chronologically, the word can sit up in that dimension, but it doesn't get affected by time. It needs obedience in the lower dimension, which is the earth realm, to earth it out. We can't have another Pentecost. I see pe preachers and pastors getting up. We need another Pentecost. You can't have another Pentecost. That would actually go against the work of the Spirit of God. Pentecost was earthed in the book of Acts. Amen. It come from the Spirit dimension. And 120 earthed it in the upper room. 380 walked out and they wanted to do the natural ceremony. But 120 stayed in the upper room according to the book of Acts. They wanted to know the true reality of the Spirit. They didn't want to go back down with the Jews and just play a feast. So the Spirit come upon them. And they were filled with the evidence of speaking in tongues. They earthed it. That which was prophesied 400 years before, they finally earthed it. The church has earthed Pentecost. So we can't earth it again. What do we need to know, Pastor Manny? We've got to earth Tabernacle. The final feast of God. Now, if you're in Pentecost, you don't know this language. You're standing over here like, what's this lad talking about? It's because you haven't been exposed. That's all it is. Your eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered into the heart the things in which God wants to do. That's what Jesus said. You've been walking with him on a journey, but now he's about to crack open the veil. He's going to remove the scale from your eye that you might see your purpose. We're going for the final goal. Everyone shout out, out amen. amen. Everything that we've been prepped in Passover and Pentecost has been scaffolding us up in life. All the scaffolds are going to fall away. Why? You will know exactly what you need to know. You will walk out what God wants you to know. Sin won't touch you. Sick, death, nothing. Everything's going to flee. This is, this is a big word. This is a big word. Pentecost, we sort of say it by faith. Oh, we're going to be raptured up by faith. We're going to come up out of the grave. We're talking this language, but we don't understand the when, where, why, and how. We're sort of seeing it dimly through a glass. Paul says we look dimly through a glass, but then, but then, we shall see clearly. Good but. So we're coming to this. Coronas is now chronologically. It works with us. It works in the natural realm. The word floats in the spirit dimension. It's upheld by the word of his power. But then it needs to be earthed down by the law of obedience. Up here, there's another word for kairos. God doesn't work in this area here when we come into tabernacle. Something else happens. God kicks into a little bit higher gear. The spirit realm kicks in. In God, Ezekiel saw how God measures time. Like this. Continuous. Continuation. Well, where's God? Here. Yeah. The I am. Time to God, when Moses discovered who the I am was, Moses could go into the I am in the spirit and he could hear things and see things that were far above his time. Moses went into the I am. It's a position in God that God opens up to his his sons. Not to just anyone. We've got to know this. Yeah, but I'm a son. That's true. But you could be a baby. You have all the potential to become a mature son. It sits in your spirit, but you might be still a baby in Christ. 
You might be still on the milk of the word. You need to develop yourself. That's why Paul said this, though he is the heir of all things, yet if he is still sinning, even though you have the capability, sits in your spirit, the law of sonship. If you're like a baby in your understanding, you need to mature up today because God wants you to go into this dimension called the I am. Moses went into the position of the I am, not chronologically, he went into this position. It's called the invisible realm. Spirit talk now. That's why when Moses met God in a burning bush, he said, who do I say that you are? Moshe, he said to God, he said, Moses, he said, say that I am the I am. What does I am mean? I am means I will be everything you need me to be. I am the I am. I will be the water. I will be the rock. I will be the rod. I will be the cloud by day. I will be the fire by night. I will be the hidden manna that will feed my children. I am the I am. I will be the all in all. That's what Moses was exposed to. You don't know it right now, but you have this relationship with God. You sort of just met Jesus and you're sort of in love with Him and you think you know everything about Him. You're only in your teenage relationship with Him. The church hasn't understood that she's going into the bride. She's going into a marriage. You've got to be fully mature for this. Full. Yeah. Oh. Blowing some bo bolts here. He went into this dimension. It's called the I am. And when he went into there and he come out, the glory that was upon his face, the people said, veil it back up, Moses. There's too much glory coming off of you. It says that his face was shining bright like the sun when he'd come out from the glory realm, from behind the holies of holies. He'd come out from that dimension. Everyone said, Moses, veil yourself out. The glory's too strong. Yeah. Whoa. Aaron and Miriam got upset with him. He said, lad, you think that you know God. Don't we all hear from God? That's the attitude of Passover and Pentecost. Don't we all know God, Moses? Don't we all prophesy in, in his name, cast out demons and heal the sick in his name? And what did that man say to Jesus, say to the servant? He said, depart from me, I knew you not. The word knew means I never had true intimacy with you. You haven't yet gone in with me. You're talking about me like you know me. You haven't come in here to me yet. I'm encouraging you this morning. Moses went into that dimension and Miriam and Adam, um, Aaron, they stood on the outside and they said, oh, we prophesy in God's name. We can do all of this too. Moses, how dare you? And you know what the Lord did? He come out and he struck Miriam with leprosy. And Moses got upset. He was crying and weeping and he went back into the presence of God. And he said, he said this, he said, God, please don't hurt her. Let her live. And the Lord said, okay, this is what you need to do. He says, I want you to take your hand and I want you to put it into my womb. I want you to take your hand and put it into the womb, the heart of who I am. And it says that when he pulled his hand out, Miriam, the leprosy come off her, speaks about the power of God. Herba, how you going? And then he put his hand back into the bosom of God, back to the heartbeat of God. And guess what happened to Miriam? The, the leprosy come upon her again. And God said to Moses, he said, Moses, tell them today that I talk with everyone else in parables and proverbs, in dreams and visions. Parables and proverbs, then dreams and visions. He said, but with you, Moses, the next level, I speak to you face to face. I don't come to you in a riddle. I don't come to you in types and shadows. When I talk to you, Moses, you see me for who I am. That's why Moses could walk with God into the I am. God would take him into the I am, into the, this dimension where time wasn't. And when he would come back out, it says that he had the glory of God on him. He is Moses. 
1,000, 2,000 years, 3,000 years. Moses would go in here, he came out with the glory. There's only one thing that Moses describes the glory. Moses seen the Christ. He went into the I Am and God shot him out in through time. In the Spirit. And he came out in the book of Matthew chapter 16 on the mountain of Mount Transfiguration. And everyone said they saw Elijah and Moses. How did they see them? It happened right back then. He was in the I Am and he come out in the book of Matthew chapter 16 and he could see from the glory cloud the Christ was there. Took him through time. See, this word is a word from the Spirit. Man's logic, man's understanding and reasoning can't fathom what the Spirit of God has for us. So Moses would go up into this dimension and God would unveil thousands of years before what the Christ would look like. He was there, Moses was there. He was back there 2,000 years ago on the mountain of Mount Transfiguration and Elijah was there too. And they were standing there in the great cloud of witnesses in the spirit dimension and they were looking down and they could see that the sun was birthed. Talk about joy. The encouragement. So Moses began to declare the spirit of prophecy over all the children of Israel. Everyone was upset. No, somebody prophesied Moses. He said, oh, though that I wish all of my children could prophesy. Oh, that I wish all of my children could see in this dimension. In the spirit, you can see. Hundreds, thousands of years, God can take you up into that dimension. But we're so struggling down here in the natural realm because our spirit man is weak. Charles Finney, awesome man of God, Smith Wigglesworth, all of these men, they were going up into the I Am and they could see the end time. Charles Finney, he saw in his time God took him up into the spirit dimension. And guess what he saw? He saw mankind 2,000 years. They were sitting in fields with little phones that had TVs. Charles Finney was taken up into the spirit. He was seeing the iPhone. <laughs> your feet haven't left the ground, but your spirit moves with God. I'm not talking astro travel. I'm talking spirit travel. Compatible with God to the point that you can move through time. Pick up the voice of the Father, what he's about to do. Whew. See, we all talk about Caleb, this great man of God. Caleb never went to battle one day. I didn't know that. I thought Caleb was a warring man. Caleb was trained by his father called Yephani in the Hebrew tongue. Joshua and Caleb, they were the only two allowed to go over into the promised land. All the other spies, that whole generation got wiped out. You've got to have a prophetic eye to go into the season. You will be given the portion of what you walk out with God. He loves you. He will give you a portion of your inheritance. But if that's all you want with him, that's what he'll give you. Yephany trained up Caleb. Caleb had to go to war with Kirajath Arbor. He was a giant in the land at that time. A little bit of history for everyone. Can you give me 11 o'clock? He's all right? All right? Kirajath Abul was a giant in that time. Huge man. Some say well over 10 feet. Description of the Bible said there were giants in the land. His name was Kirajath Abul. Caleb come up to him and he said, I've got to take this land, Caleb. Um, Joshua, give me the land. Joshua said, take it. Caleb never went to war that day. That's not Bible teaching. The true history of that Bible encounter, what happened, Caleb had a beautiful daughter at that time. And he said, is there a champion among us? This is a picture of you and I. We don't have to go to battle. We need to know the one who's already gone to battle for us. Caleb called upon one young man. His name was Othniel. Everyone say Othniel. Othniel was a young warrior. Guess what his name means in Hebrew? The roar of a lion. It's a picture of Christ in us. 
It's a shadow of the character of Christ within us. He goes to war, people of God. He does the battle and the victory for us. We've just got to pick up on his character. Othniel went to war that day. He killed, he killed Kiribath Arbor. And Caleb said, now you will be given the hand in marriage, my daughter. He's gone to battle for us. He's dealt with the giants in our mind. He's dealt with the demonic entities to birth this whole new Greek creation. He wants a bride. You're the bride this morning. He's the bridegroom. So kairos is different to chronological. Kairos takes us, this word kairos takes us into the I am, into the individual, into the invisible dimension. And that's where we pick up on the character and the nature of the Father and we get to see the promises of God. We get to look into that dimension with God. And he allows us to do that by kairos. Ezekiel said, I see a wheel within a wheel. That inner wheel was the I am. The other wheel is the time of man. We're all frightened to think that only Jesus has done this. Moses did it. Enoch did it. Enoch did it. Enoch went into God, he went into the I am, came out, in, out, in, out. He went in, he never come out. No one found Enoch's body. 365 years of age when he went into the I am. He went in, he went out, went in, went out. He went in, he never come out of that spirit dimension. He's still sitting in that dimension. Some say he's one of the two witnesses. Book of Revelation chapter 11. He never tasted death. Enoch never tasted death. See, this is Bible language now. We're, 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 we're thinking, Whoa, oh man, man, we've got graves stacked up out here at the Innisfail Cemetery. The power of this word, the ability to raise even up the dead. Jesus said on the third day I'm coming up, he wasn't just guessing that. He was prophesying over his own life the testimony that he heard in his father's bosom. Jesus had to believe the very word that he had with the Father, the relationship. If Jesus never spoke that word, he wouldn't have came up on the third day. Jesus didn't taste death before that day. How can he talk about resurrection? He was prophesying that which he had already seen with the Father. He said, on the third day, I'm coming up. On the third day, I'm coming up. On the third day, I'm coming up. He has come up. Now we're in the book of Revelations. He's going to bring a whole body up. He's already been the first prototype. He's about to bring up an entire body of believers in the power of resurrection. Just putting it out there for you. Trying to get your mind open to the things of the Spirit of God. Sometimes we just want to hear another good old sermon about life. I'll tell you what, this is Zoe life. What is Zoe life, Pastor Manny? Resurrection life. It speaks from the new man, the new creation. Revelation chapter 10, let's read it, verse 1. I've only got 15 minutes. I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed in the cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head. His face was as it were the sun, his feet were as pillars of fire. I don't want to debate too much about this. All I want you to know is the word angel there can mean three things. The Greeks wrote it down in a word called angelos. It means a messenger. It can be a holy messenger. It can be an angel with wings. It can be a bad messenger. So this angel is a mighty angel. It's a mighty word. That's all that word means there. I saw another angel. That word another is the same word Jesus used in the book of John chapter 10 when he spoke about, I will send you another comforter. It's the same person but just in a different form. This is Christ. This is his character working in us. He said, I saw a mighty angel. John saw the mighty angel. The word mighty there is the character of Christ. Isaiah chapter 11 tells us that the spirit of might was upon him. 
the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, the fear of the Lord, and that the spirit of God rested upon him. Seven spirits of God sits upon Christ. It's seven means the full character. Seven means complete. It's the full character of the spirit of his might. And he wants to do something in you. The church is struggling with interpretation because they're looking for the external. I saw him coming down down from heaven, out of the spirit. He was clothed in a cloud and a cloud speaks about the witness. It's a place of the voice of God. Jesus is returning in a cloud. God, when he came to the um, Hebrew children in the wilderness, he came down as a cloud. The cloud is a symbol of God's voice, his presence. And the only one who has the presence of God in that dimension is Jesus. He's clothed in the presence of God. Oh! Carnal mind's going stupid. It doesn't understand this word. But it's got to be challenged. You've never heard this before. You've got to be challenged on your interpretation. It says that he was clothed with the cloud. It's the voice of the Father. And a rainbow was about his head. About his head. So if you had the mind of Christ, Jesus is here. This is his face. In the spirit realm, John said, I saw the rainbow. Now a rainbow on the earth only goes like this. You can only see half of the rainbow. But he said he saw a rainbow around about his head. It speaks about the covenants of God the eternal covenant of God, all of the covenants of God, He brings. He's going to bring it to pass. He said, I saw the rainbow upon His head. His face, were as it were the sun. That's Jesus, people of God. His countenance is the sun. His feet is as pillars of fire. In Revelation chapter 2, His feet are are pictured like brazen brass that have gone through the fire. It's his judgment. The word judgment means a righteous separation. Christ, Christian them only wants to kill off the whole earth. Everyone just wants the earth to be judged. No, Christ wants to bring a righteous judgment. He wants to deal with the world, but he also wants to deal with the, the church of the living God. If judgment begins in the earth, it first begins in the house of God. We want the world to be smashed. You need to be cleaned up. There's a lot of things that you need dealing in your life. Take the speck out of your eyes, take the beam out of your own eyes so you can remove the speck out of your brother's eye. We've got to be dealt with. This is how he's going to do it. He's going to do it in us. The spirit of this word. He, he had in his hand a little book. Everyone say little book. You know where that little book come from? Revelation chapter 5. It's his life. Little book is Jesus' life. It's the life of the lamb, the life of the sacrifice, what he's paid for us. But in scripture, when John sees it, he says it's like a little book. You can read it. The power of his life. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ. This is the unveiling of of the man Jesus Christ in you. That's the revelation we're reading. Christ in you. He says, in his hand was a little book and it opened it up. And he set upon the right foot, on his right foot went on the sea. And his left foot went on the earth. Everyone go right, left. Right, left. Now dance. Ah. Right foot is dominion. Left foot is dominion. He's trying to show us the character of Christ in you has dominion over humanity, which is the sea, and dominion over the earth, which is the character that has plagued the earth. He and him alone has dominion. Preeminence over all things, says the word of God. 
And he sits in your spirit wanting to, re- wanting to execute this word in your life. He is the little book. Revelation chapter 5. Let's read it. Where did this little book come? It came from Revelation chapter 5. I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside. It was sealed with seven seals. It was a little book. And this little book had seven seals. A parchment is written on the backside and on the inside. Everyone said the back half was when Moses was pushed into the cleft of the rock and God hid him from the presence of God. That's why God allowed him to write the Torah. The back side of God. The New Testament. <laughs> That's the front side of God. Amen. Here, this context. It's him. The context is him. It's Jesus. He is the book of life. He said, I saw him. It was written on the backside and on the inside. It was sealed with seven seals. I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loosen the seal? The word loosen in the Hebrew, in the Greek there, it means this. It means, loosen means epilu. It means to untie and unravel this mystery. Who can do this? No man in heaven, no man in the earth, no man under the earth was able to open the book to release the character of the sonship. Only Jesus could do it. And it says everyone wept much because no man was found worthy to read or to open the book, neither to even look upon the contents. One of the elders said to us, he said, Weep not for the lion of the tribe of Judah. The root of David has prevailed to open the book, to unloosen the life of sonship. Jesus revealed to the earth sonship. What you and I are becoming. We think we're just here to be somebody else and to work and to do ranges and a school and church and all of that that's all a part of life but the bigger calling is this do you know that you're a son of the living God bought and purchased by the blood of the lamb created in the image and the likeness of the father see these are words that we don't ponder on we're so gobsmacked we're, we're thinking that God's outside there somewhere he's right here in you he wants to bring you through he wants to save you He wants to provide you with the change and a transformation. He doesn't want you to be living in among the swallows. He wants to raise you up. But see, we need to get our eyes up and open to this. He said, the root of David has prevailed to open this book, to loosen the seven seals. And behold, and lo, in the midst of the throne was four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it was slain. It had seven horns, seven eyes, seven spirits of God. If I can say to you this, if Jesus has got a number in the spirit... If Antichrist has got this number, Jesus has got a number. Guess what Jesus' number in the Spirit is? Seven, seven, seven. Seven horns, seven eyes. It looks horrible, eh? And seven spirits. This is the Lamb. This is the character of Him. But in the Spirit... The number seven means to be complete. The word horn means power. You're looking at the fullness of his power. When the book is open, Christ is open inside of you, you're going to get the fullness of the horn, the fullness of his power. Jesus come into your life, you didn't just get his toe. Jesus come into your life, you didn't just get his big finger. You got all of Jesus inside of you. You got the seven horn, complete power. Also, Jesus has seven eyes. It's a horrible looking beast, eh? It's prophetic language. Seven means to be complete. Eye means prophetic. You have the perfect prophetic eye. You will see how he sees the Father. For when you see him, you shall be like him. We can't even look at one another to think that even God's in him. 
I can't believe God's even in that person. We say that we love him and we can't love our brother. We lie. That's what the truth says. Unfortunately, some of humanity don't realize they were bought with the blood of the lamb, purchased by the blood of the lamb. That's why you can go to the drunk sitting in the well. You can go to the beggar on the side of the road. Jesus could go to every dimension because he knew that God created all of mankind. Don't look at people as though they're nothing. The power of this word, the seven horns, the power of this word can even take a drunk and raise him up. Can take the loss and cause him to be found. Can I throw one more in there? Yeah, I'll throw one more in there. The blind will be able to see again. Their calling and their destiny in God. He had seven horns, seven eyes. What's the other seven? Seven spirits of God. Revel You'll find that in Isaiah chapter 11. Spirit of the Lord that rests upon him, the spirit of counsel, might, wisdom, knowledge, um, and the spirit of the, the f spirit of the fear of the Lord, the seven spirits of God. Isaiah chapter eleven. That's all of them. But the only reason why I went to that scripture was to read you the last verse. It had seven eyes, seven horns, which are the seven spirits of God. Listen to this. Where is that spirit of God? It was sent forth into all of the earth. Everyone say earth. earth. We're going to finish there. Too many bolts have been blown here this morning. Power too much. That earth, this character when you were born again, was released into your spirit. You don't have Jesus as half power in you. Even though in life you might be struggling, You've got to get up and you've got to prophesy. You've got to speak the word over your own life to get up. We want everyone to pray for us. Everyone to prophesy over. You've got to get up this morning and speak this word on your feet. Speak it on the journey. You've had every other word spoken to you. Every, you might have been hurt when you were a child. Your father put you down and you never got a word of compassion. But I'm telling you, you've got your greatest father this morning is Jesus Christ. He's been released into you. He just wants you to talk with him. So we're on this journey. We are going on to where God is wanting to take us. And he said this in verse 4 of Revelation 10. What happens with this character when it's opened in us? He said this, When the seven thunders have uttered their voice, I was about to write, I heard the voice from heaven saying, Seal it up. Those things which the seven thunders are uttering, write them not. And the angel which I saw upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hands to heaven and swore by him that liveth forever and ever and created heaven and all things that are in there and the sea and the things that there are which in, that there would be no more time longer. What's going to happen? That word there, kairos and chronos. Well, what, what is God going to do at the end of the age? Is there going to be no moon, no stars? No. He's trying to describe to you that when the full mystery of God opens inside of you, when the set of seven utterances of God, the fullness of who you are, is broken open in your life. When that takes place that day, there'll be no more time working in you. What do you mean no more time? Because you're one with the Father, there'll be no delay in the word that you speak. If God tells you to heal, you will heal. God tells you that you will walk, you will walk. If God tells you to cleanse something, it will be cleansed immediately. There's no delay. Why? It's a kairos word. It's not chronological. That's a word that comes out of the spirit and it hits the earth immediately. There will be no time any longer. You will pick up on the heart of the Father and you'll speak it as it comes out. The earth hasn't seen this. Church has wrapped it up. They've got their theologies and ideologies. 
To them, it's all coming to an end. To me, and to the, what the Word is saying, it's unveiling the beginning. It might be an end to something else, but it's the start of the beginning of the new creation. Feel that? The whole earth is shaking. It is waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God, Romans says this. The earth is waiting for the manifestation. Not a revelation of this, the word manifestation, meaning it has to come out into the earth. It is waiting for a manifestation never seen before like on this scale of level. You won't just see one Jesus like Jesus. He was the first of his brethren. There will be many of them. Not that you will be Jesus, but the character coming off you, it will be exactly like the Son. People will be going, who's that? That's the Son of the living God. Who, Derek? That's the Son of the living God. Because the character will be coming off of you. Everyone wanted to see God, where, guess where they wanted to? They went to Adam. You wanted to know what the invisible looked like, you had to go to Adam. Same as Jesus. From Adam to Jesus was 4,000 biblical years. From Jesus to now, every 2,000 years there's been a son. Well, it's been 2,000 years. We're about to see another son. But it's not going to be one. It's going to be an entire company that looks like him. The earth is about to see this. Whoa! That's what Isaiah said in his spirit. He said, whoa! You know what woe means in the spirit realm? Get the eye, get the ear to hear, because God's about to do something. He said that word in the valley of Barak. God is about to release a blessing that no eye has seen before. Let's stand this morning. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm trying to get you to know your calling. You might be a teacher, you might be a principal, you might be a mechanic, you might be a husband. They're all part of your life. But inside of you, there's a bigger calling. You're a son of the living God, a son and a daughter of the Most High God. There's things in you that I can't reveal or manifest on the earth, only you can. There's miracles inside of you that only you can do, I can't do. We're all on the journey together. Who's excited? Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. We don't know what he's paid for us this morning. Now that song they sing, what do they sing in church? They sing that song, what song do they sing? I will never know how much it costs to see my sins upon the cross. That's a beautiful song. But you know what that's doing? That shows our ignorance to divine revelation. That's what the children of Israel done when they were in Babylon in the captivity. By the rivers of Babylon, where we sat down. They were singing about their captivity, that they were wishing they were back in their homeland. Our song's not going to be that. Our song's written for us. Amen. It's called the Song of the Redeemed in the book of Revelations. We're not going to be singing about the shoulda, coulda, woulda life. We're going to be declaring, I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I am the called, I am the chosen, I am the sons and the daughters of the Most High God. What a day. What a day. Let's lift our hands to heaven. Father, we thank you. We know that your word is spirit. And it's truth. Everyone else is a liar. We ask today for the Holy Spirit to be the counselor and the comforter. Bring to our remembrance the things that you have already done for us. Lord, and draw us unto your own, unto yourself. As you declared in the word, you said, only my sons will be drawn to me. 
Lord, this word has got to spark something in us to know that we're called for a greater calling, a greater witness, a greater walk in you, God. We are not here on our own, but we have a purpose and a plan filled by God and a destiny that we have to walk out. Give us the ears to hear this and the eye to see it, the heart to do it. The hands to work it out and the feet to walk it, Father, and the mouth to speak it. Lord, as you have called us, Father God, for this very divine purpose, that the earth might know that you are God and the fullness thereof, it belongs to you. We love you, Daddy. We thank you for your word. Bring light, Father God, to our heart. We might see clearly this intention. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we declared and said, we declared and said, Amen. Oh, give him honor this morning. Pastor Anthony.